888-835-2414. This is Learning with Leslie. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Learning with Leslie, the podcast where we focus on making an impact from home, at home, and beyond. No, I'm not talking about the kind of impact that's going to fall by the wayside when Google has a mood swing. (laughs) I'm talking about the kind that will thrive no matter what happens to it. I'm your host, Leslie Samuel from IamLeslieSamuel.com, where we're changing the world one person at a time. And as usual, I have another exciting episode for you today. In today's episode, episode 417, we're going to be talking about why you can't ignore AI. Yep, AI. It's the talk of the town. For some, so many people, they think it's the best thing since sliced bread. For others, they're concerned about AI taking over, taking our jobs, and ushering in the end of the good old days as we know it. We have writers going on strike. We have uh, scientists saying that it will cure all diseases. We have people saying all kind of stuff. Who do we believe? And more importantly, how do we navigate it in our day-to-day lives? I'm going to be bringing you into a conversation that's happening in my own head and with some very smart people. Um, So if you're interested in AI, that is what we're going to be talking about today. What is up? What is up? What is up? Leslie here. I am so excited. I'm so excited to be alive. I hope you are having a better than stupendous day. And if for some reason, you're not having a better than stupendous day. I hope that by the end of this podcast episode, it can be a little more better than stupendous. We got a big topic to get into today because, man, this is this is a huge thing, and I can't wait to talk about it, um, and we're going to get into it. But before we do that, I have to let you know that this podcast episode is brought to you by our sponsors over at Ecamm Live. They are the sponsors for this podcast, but they are also who make this this podcast possible. This is the technology that I use so that I can create this podcast without editing. If you've never checked them out, I highly encourage you to check them out because they're going to save you a lot of time by producing your videos without editing and still making an amazing production. So check them out at ecamcom slash Leslie, and that's going to save you 15% off your first payment. Yeah, so check them out. I'll talk to you a little more about them and a special event we have going on next week if you're listening to this podcast when it first when it first came out. So on that note, we got to get into the topic for today. Let's talk about why you cannot and should not ignore artificial intelligence. All right, so let's get into it. AI. AI is a big topic. And I did a uh, an episode recently where I actually interviewed, uh, I did an interview with, <laughs> with ChatGPT, and it was an, an audio interview where I was having a conversation with ChatGPT. And it was very insightful for a lot of you um, and concerning for some of you. Uh, it was very exciting for me and concerning for me as well. So I know that this is something that uh, is a topic that a lot of people that listen to this podcast, they are thinking about. It's something that I'm thinking about a a lot as well. And I want to share some of my thoughts. And this is a conversation that we're going to continue to have over time because the reality is AI is going to be a huge part of our lives moving forward. And whether we like it or not, it's still going to be a part of our reality. The fact is, it is a part of our reality right now. If you exist today, if you go on the internet, and even if you don't go on the internet, AI is a part of your reality. And the question is, how do we navigate it? With so many people saying so many crazy things about AI, How do we navigate this technological shift that is happening and that is affecting just about every aspect of our lives living in the the, in 2024? The first thing I want to talk about is the 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 moral panic that that tends to happen when there are certain technological advancements. Because what I want to point out is not that 
the moral panics are completely unjustified. I want to point out that the moral panics are not anything new. Now, some of this might be familiar to you already, but I think it's important because it sets the context. It sets context for the reaction that we are having today to artificial intelligence. I just want to walk you through a few things, right? Um, so back in the 5th century BC, so this is over 2,000 years ago, all right? There was this um, guy named Socrates. Uh, you've probably heard of Socrates. And he issued a huge warning. And the warning that he issued was this new thing that was starting to happen. And that was the written word. All right. This is what he said. He was extremely concerned because as a result of us now just writing down our thoughts and anyone being able to like write, that will result in, and I quote, Weakening the, the ne weakening the necessity and power of memory and for allowing the pretense of understanding rather than true understanding. So his concern was, you know, back, back in those days, you know, if you wanted to know something, you had to know it, right? You had to, you had to, to, to learn it and you had to remember it. But if now we're writing things down, what is that going to do to our memories? Now, was it a valid concern? Absolutely. Was it a bit overblown? Uh, probably. Because today, ri the written word is just a normal part of how we do things. Example number two. Printing press back in 1440s, in the 1440s, um, invented by uh, Gutenberg. When it was invented, once again, there was a moral panic. What was the moral panic for? The moral panic was there was a huge concern for job loss and the societal harm that can come through the damaging effects of information overload. Because now we can just not, not just have written word, but we can print it in mass quantities now. And, and, and that's going to result in all kinds of information coming to us. And that information overload is going to have significant negative effects on our brains, on our society. Um, there's going to be societal harm as a result of the printing press. Today, uh, a few hundred years later, 500 and something years later or so, how many ever years later that is, the printing press and, you know, publishing books and so on, it's a part of our society and has been a part of our society and how we learn and transmit information throughout the generations, right? But initially there was a huge uproar against this. All right, let's, let's give another example. When light bulbs were invented, Light bulbs, this stuff, I have a bunch of light bulbs all around me right now. There was huge concern. Why was there huge concern? Because back in those days, you had these professional lamp lighters that used to go around and light lamps in the streets so that you can see. And what they're saying is, if you have these things where you could just switch them on and now there's light, we're going to be out of jobs. Was it a valid concern? Absolutely. But now, fast forward a few years later, <laughs> and now it's a, a part of our society, and we can't even imagine living without it. The steam engine. When the steam engine was invented, <laughs> there was serious concern over our physical and mental health. And here's why. Because the motion and the sounds of the train and how it travels, it could trigger us to go mad and go crazy. The thought was that the human mind wasn't even capable of coping over time with moving at such high speeds. This was a significant concern. This is moral panic. Now, was there validity to this concern? I'm not. I'm not too sure about that one at all. I'm trying to think, okay, where could there be some truth in this? I, I, 
I, I don't know, but it was a concern. When the telegraph was invented back in the 1800s, oh man, that was, there was a huge concern about that because um, there was concern that now there would be significantly more work pressure and the erosion of leisure time. We're not gonna have as much free time because now we can transmit these messages quickly. Wait, wait, there was more. There was anxiety that the rapid transmission uh, of info could lead to mental conditions caused by overstimulation and the constant influx of news. Like, it's going to affect our brains. It, it's going to affect the way we think. It's going to affect the way we process. It's going to affect our abilities. This m moral outrage in response to or in reaction to technological advances is nothing new. And the arguments that we are seeing today are not new arguments. It's going to take our jobs. It's going to mess up our brains. It's going to um, erode our leisure time. It's going to disconnect us from others. It's going to cause us to waste a lot of time. When the telephone um, was invented, people were concerned about the electrical signals and how it can lead to deafness because you have this device that you're holding by your ear. Um, and not only that, it, they were very concerned for women because now women would be... Um, it, it, <laughs> women would be having all kinds... <laughs> Okay, maybe there's, never mind, never mind. Okay, women would be having all kinds of frivolous conversations and that would erode uh, the, 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 the domestic order because now they're just talking to each other on the phone. Like, <laughs> that was the main, that was, that was a huge, I'm laughing, but it was a huge concern. Now, we are in 2024 as I'm recording this. You might be listening to this in 2058. I don't know. And you might be laughing at me uh, saying these kinds of things in 2024. The reality is now there are technological advancements. And with those technological advancements, there is tremendous concern for the way it's going to affect our society as a whole, the way it's going to affect our brains, the way it's going to affect our jobs. Don't do this. It will take our jobs away. But if we look throughout the, the history of time and we learn from our past, what we see is that the reality is there is some truth to those concerns. There is validity to those, to some of those concerns, some of them, not all of them. There is validity. Um, th th there's, there was huge outrage and very, a lot of concern about social media and the use of smartphones and all of that stuff. And the reality is our, our, our society, especially when it comes to news, it thrives on moral panic. What I am not saying is that None of this moral panic is justified. But what I am saying is that when analyzing this moral panic, we need to analyze it with a balanced approach. Because while, for example, technology and like smartphones and the fact that everybody has a smartphone or, or access to social media, while there are significant negative things that can happen as a result of that, and the radio, and the telephone, and all of these things, there are also significant benefits that we can get if they are, they are used wisely. I am starting to see, and this is very significant for me as a parent, I'm starting to see that we are very quick to demonize the technology, and we are slower to take responsibility for how we navigate the technology. It is easy for me to blame Facebook for the fact that I am wasting time on Facebook. It is much harder for me to take a look at myself and ask myself the question, why am I wasting time on Facebook? What is it about my current situation? What is it about my current mindset that makes me so much more likely to be addicted to a social platform? 
Because when all we try to do is pass the blame on someone else, we fail to focus on the part that we actually have influence over. I want to let that sit, sink in for a little bit. Once again, it is very, I'm, I'm going to come from a different perspective, but similar. It is very easy for me to look at social media and say, I don't want my child on this thing because it is bad. Is there bad on social media? Yes. Is there good on social media? Is there good on the radio, on the TV, in our computers, on the internet? Is th do good things happen as a result of these technologies? Absolutely. So for me, the bigger question, the big question is not, should I be on social media? Should I leverage AI? The big question is, how do I navigate it in a responsible way? How do I involve myself in my kids' life, in my kids' lives, in a way that engages them and do it in a way where when they have to navigate using these technologies, because they will, the reality is, if you think AI is a big part of our lives, Wait until you see how it's going to be 20 years from now when they're adults and they have to navigate those things. The things we teach them today is what sets a foundation for how they're going to navigate whatever the new technologies are in the future. Does that make sense? If it makes sense, I don't care where you are. I want you to come on over to YouTube and drop a comment and tell me about this part before we move on to anything else. Let me know if that makes sense to you. And of course, while you're over here, hit the subscribe button and all that good stuff, like and share and all that good stuff. But what I want to encourage, what I want to encourage is for us to come up with better ways to, to, to navigate this in our personal lives, in the lives of our families, in the lives of the people that we interact with, so that we can show how, while there is validity to the moral panic, we can show how there's also an other side, another side where there's productivity, where there's efficiency, where there's cost savings, where there's time savings, and where it allows me to, to, to have a deeper impact on the world. It allows me to not spend as much time on other things so that I can focus on the things that matter. I don't know why I did this weird thing with my hands just now. <laughs> that's just the weird person that I am. But to me, that's what it's all about. So what I want to do is, you know, I did the interview with AI and so on. I want to share just some of my thoughts on how, I believe AI is beneficial because in all of these situations with technological advancements where there is moral panic, there's truth and there's error. And how we navigate that makes a huge difference. So let's talk about some of the things. In the medical field, yeah, I talk about, I talk about content creation because that's what I do. But I want, to, I want us to now have a broader discussion on 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 AI. And obviously there's only so 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 much I can talk about, but I want to give you some examples of how AI is actually contributing to our lives in a positive way. You've heard a lot of the negative, but let's talk about some of the positives. I did a segment um, recently on the news or somewhere, I don't remember where it was, where I was talking about how AI is helping in the medical field to be able to better diagnose certain things. So for example, doctors, would you agree that many medical, many people in the medical industry, in a medical field are overworked? I would. Like if you're an emergency uh, medicine, uh, medical, uh, a physician in the emergency department, your, your, listen, your, <laughs> your job is intense. Like 
your job is intense and you're seeing all of these patients they're coming in and you have to make split second decisions you're overworked you're tired you're exhausted and one thing i know personally is when i'm exhausted i don't make the best decisions now here's the here's the reality the reality is ai is really good at taking large bodies of information parsing through those large bodies of information and 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 predicting an outcome or giving a diagnosis. I'm not even talking about um, medical diagnosis here. Like it, I, you can feed AI an entire book and then ask it one detailed question about something that is on a random page on the book and it can get it within seconds for you. Whether it's tired or not. <laughs> and the reality is, it doesn't get tired. It might get overloaded, and then it can't process, but it can parse through that information. Now, if you're a medical doctor that's consumed all of this content about medicine and the human body and so on, and you have to remember that one detail about that one rare condition that you read about back when you were in medical school... What are the chances that you're going to get it right? You might. But you also, in many cases, probably won't. But AI can help in those situations. AI um, has, has resulted in detecting heart issues earlier because it's able to, like when you, you, you have stethoscopes that have AI built in now where they can listen to the minute details and compare it to large bodies of information that it's analyzed thoroughly and be able to say, hey, wait, 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 there's that little sound that is reminiscent of that other sound that I cons when I consume that large body of information that I heard that could indicate that this baby is having a heart issue. And it's allowing for doctors now to, to detect these heart issues much sooner. AI is going in a direction in the medical field where, you know, when in the medical field, right? When I get medicine, I get that medicine because they're comparing my symptoms to, you know, generally speaking, a bunch of the similar symptoms, and they're trying to come up with a, a drug that is not specific to me and my body chemistry and any of that sort. It is, it is kind of like an, an aggregate where it's saying, okay, when I put these chemicals together, it helps a larger, a, a decent percentage of people enough that I can start prescribing it because it seems it's relatively safe and it helps on a large scale. But that might not be the case for me. AI now allows us to be able to take a lot more detail in about the individual, make a more accurate diagnosis, and then provide a more customized care to me because now it's taking my situation fully into consideration. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But it is increasing our accuracy. That's just a reality. If you think I'm wrong, you can look at the data, you can look at the studies, you can look at that. And if you still think I'm wrong, that's fine. But the reality is from the research that I've done, I'm seeing an increased accuracy because we're de depending on a, a, a tool that can analyze a large data set very quickly and come up with some very quick and relatively accurate diagnoses. That's reality. Let's talk about education. I used to be a, a teacher at a high school, and then I used to be a, a university professor. In education, AI... <laughs> Man, if I were teaching right now, oh my goodness, I'd be all up in AI because AI, I've been using AI uh, because I'm working on an anatomy and physiology course right now. It's helping me come up with some amazing lesson plans. It's giving me creative ideas of ways that I can teach 
complicated concepts in uh, and things that I had not thought about, different activities that I can give my students so that they can better understand how the human body functions, scavenger hunts, and and all listen, all kinds of creative things that because I am not able to just get access to all of this information and bring it all together and compute in my mind. I'm not able to be as creative as I've seen some of the tools that I use. If I were a teacher today, I would be using it to come up with lessons, lesson plans, to help me come up with lesson plans. I'd be using it. Um, one of the most annoying things for me when I was teaching was grading. I'd be scanning the papers um, giving them to a uh, 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 Claude or chat GPT and having it graded. And it would take a few seconds for it to grade and it would be pretty accurate. You know how much time that saves me? And because it saves me that much time, you know what that does? It gives me more time to work with the individual student. And that to me is how you leverage technology to make us more human. Does that make sense? Once again, I want you to actually answer this one again. Come over to YouTube to this video and let me know what you think. Does that make sense? I think it does. Ooh, maybe that's the principle. If I can use this technology to take away a lot of the menial things, or at least to reduce the things. And when I say menial, I don't mean that it's not valuable. I mean, it's things that take a lot of time that don't necessarily have to take a lot of time. If I can offload a bunch of those things in a way that allows me to be there for my students in a more effective way, is that a good tool for me to use? Yeah. Students can use it to write papers that they didn't write and they can cheat and all this kind of stuff, right? Yeah, I, I'm aware of that. I've heard about it on the news. But can I teach students how to use AI in a responsible way? Showing them how when you do use AI to make sure to credit, like to, to, to say, this is, I used AI to do this and this is how I did it, but this part is my interpretation. This is the part where I had to put my critical thinking hat on and analyze the information that I was getting from this tool. This is how I was able to determine that this was inaccurate based on the research. Like, can we educate our kids in this way about a technology that's not going anywhere? Um, my son is an artist. Uh, or Well, he would say that he's an engineer or he's a future engineer. He is so into engineering and like space and rockets and so on. He went through a phase before this where he was so into architecture. And he would draw these elaborate buildings. When I say elaborate buildings, it looked like an architect, a grown architect drew those things. They were detailed, they were three-dimensional and so on. And we started using AI uh, mid-journey to, to, to push his creativity. And this was his idea. This is what he started doing at the age of 10 or 11. He would ask me, can you ask mid-journey, or well, he would say, ask AI to create an image of a modern mansion that, and then he'd go into detail about how he wants it to be. And then within like a minute, we have this amazing picture. And he would use that as inspiration to draw and create other types of things that he had not thought about before. And we'd be in church and he would be there drawing. While listening, he's drawing and that's keeping him busy. But his mind was being pushed. His mind is being pushed because of the drawings that, or the creations, I don't know what you call them, that Midjourney was putting together. And that's how we used AI. We're using AI right now in the morning. I study the Bible with my kids, um, and we're doing a particular study. And as we're doing this particular, oh, my, 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 
Um, my dog is going crazy. That means somebody's at the door. Or coming. Oh, oh. <laughs> I ordered Uber Eats, and I think it's here. What do I do? Do I stop the podcast? I didn't know it was going to come so fast. Oh, wait. I'm, I'm using Ecamm Live. I can hit pause. <laughs> because I'm using e- Ecamm Live, I'm going to hit pause. And just like that, I got my food, and we're good to go. <laughs> oh, man, I love Ecamm Live. Yeah, so we're doing, right now, we're studying about a specific topic that my kids are trying to make a decision on. And I'm using ChatGPT to show me all of the places in the Bible where it talks about that particular topic. And within seconds, I have it all listed. And I can go through and we can study it, me and my kids. That to me, this right here, is is like really good use of AI. And I absolutely love it. Okay, so I, sh- I, w- I want to share one more um, a very interesting use of AI. By the way, I, I failed to mention this, but if you want to explore a little more about the whole idea of like the history of moral panics, there's an awesome presentation on this website, connectsafely.org slash moral panic. And I will link to that in the description. Um, I think they do a really good job. Connectsafely.org. If you're a parent and you are concerned about navigating technology, you should check them out because they have all kinds of information in terms of how to navigate technology as a parent with your children. Like if you're using uh, social, if you're allowing them to use social media or a smartphone, they have contracts that you can use to, you know, go over with your kids how they're going to be using it and how they shouldn't use it and so on. And you, you too can sign a contract. So there's an agreement. It's a great resource. Check them out. Anyhow, uh, I wanted to mention that because some of the information that I shared at the beginning about moral panics came from that particular presentation. Uh, So I highly recommend checking that out. Okay, so I want to get into the more creative aspect of AI. Um, Before we do that, let me do this because I I already told you that this podcast is brought to you by Ecamm Live. Well... Ecamm Live is hosting an event next week from April 24th to April 26th. If you're watching this on time, I highly recommend for you to check it. It's a virtual event called Leap Into Tools and Tactics. And I'm going to be speaking at that event. They have, you can see I'm one of the keynote speakers, uh, Stephanie Garcia, Luria Petrucci. If you are a content creator, if you create content on the internet and you use live video or 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 re- just any kind of video production like what I'm doing here or the videos that I make on my YouTube channel you have to be at this event because this event is going to um, give you the insights on the tools and tactics that you can use to to be more efficient with your content. We've got some great speakers that are going to be there. Um, some of my friends like uh, uh, Doc Rock, Kirk Nugent, my boy, my brother from another mother, Kat Mulverhill, uh, uh, Tanya Smith, uh, Jeff C., Eric Fisher. I mean, all kinds of amazing people. These are the people that you want to learn from when it comes to creating videos on the internet. My talk is going to be, let's see if I can find my talk. My talk is going to be on the topic of automating content creation. Basically, I'm going to be sharing the process that I am developing for leveraging AI and different tools to make my content creation process so much more efficient. I will link to this event. It is free to attend live, or if you want to get the upgraded ticket, you can pay like 45 bucks and then you get the, the guide and the recordings and all of that good stuff. Check them out. It's going to be at leapinto.com altarlive.com and I will link to that in the description for you to check it out. You can attend for free, y'all. And it's going to be a lot of great information. I'm going to be attending to learn a lot of this information because I see some topics like, um, let's see, uh, how to get your audience to engage more, instant YouTube automation, the minimalist content creator, choosing the right text, seamless content creation, uh, three unorthodox approaches to video podcasting, uh, 
Listen, listen, a lot of great stuff. So check them out. Link will be in the description. All right, all right, let's do this. I want to share something that I started playing around with, and that is using AI to create music. Um, technology. This AI technology is blowing my mind, and uh, yeah, I think it's going to blow your mind right now. I want to share with you some prompts that I gave. I'm using this app called Suno, and you can see uh, the app. Let me just share my screen so that you can see what it looks like. This is the app right here. And what you're able to do is give it a prompt and it will make a song for you. So, for example, the prompt that I gave was, uh, let's go to this one and not press play yet. Um, this one was, if I remember correctly, a gospel a cappella song by a male quartet about just having a good day. That's that's what it's about, all right? So let's see. <laughs> yeah, let's see what this came up with. Oh, listen to this, man. All right, song number one. Woke up this morning with a smile on my face, oh yeah. Feeling the warmth of the sun's embrace, every breath I take, a gift of grace. I'm telling you now, there's joy I can't erase. I'm happy to be alive. Singing my soulful song, soulful song, dancing to the rhythm, praise all day long. From the depths of my heart, I'm grateful and strong. Ooh, yeah. Every moment a blessing, I can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Oh, oh. I mean, I mean, <coughs> sorry, I choked there a minute. So the prompt was an a cappella male quartet singing a catchy song with a gospel feel about why I'm happy to be alive. It made that these are voices that don't exist, a song that never existed before this prompt, and within seconds it did this. And whenever it does that, it will give you two versions of the song. So that was the first one. Here's the second. Maybe you might like this a little better. It's the same prompt. Um, it didn't get the a cappella part right, but let's give it a listen. Woke up this morning with a smile on my face. Feeling the warmth of the sun's embrace. Mm. Every breath I take, a gift of grace, I'm telling you now, there's joy I can't erase. I'm happy to be alive, singing my soulful song, soulful song. dancing to the rhythm, praise all day, long. all day long, from the depths of my heart. I'm grateful and strong Ooh, yeah. Every moment's a blessing I can't go wrong Can't go wrong <sighs> I mean <laughs> It has the instruments, it has multiple voices singing, it has harmony, it has lyrics that actually make sense. Now, I'm not saying it's perfect, but this is a song that never existed, that now existed because of my simple prompt. You want to hear more? I decided I wanted to do a little, um, a little more creativity. I asked it to cr write a song. Uh, about my kids that I love. That my son's name is Noah. He likes rockets and engineering. My daughter is Odelia, and she likes music, singing, and dancing. So here's what it came up with. I said it, wa it had to be a lighthearted R&B song about why I love my two kids. <laughs> it's going to cut off at the end, but listen, listen to this really quick song that it <laughs> created. Noah, my little 
engineer So full of dreams With a mind that's always building Reaching new extremes He loves rockets and engineers His passion clear Watching him soar high Fills my heart with joy and cheer Oh, Delia, my dancing queen My soul's so free With every move and note She sets my spirit free She loves music Singing songs that touch the soul her voice takes me to places I've... And it ended off there because it was a minute max for this one. Um, but the last line was, Her voice takes me to places I've never been before. I mean, come on, yo. Come on. Oh, I... Okay, one more, one more. I'm sorry. I wasn't going to do this because it might make it long. But I just, I want you to get a feel for where technology is going. All right. This one, uh, I want you to create an upbeat, joy-filled song titled, Oh Happy Day. All right. Here's how it goes. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's go to the beginning of the song. When I wake up in the morning, sun shining bright, I feel a spark inside me like a guiding light. Gonna take on the world with a skip in my stride. I'm gonna make it happen. Nothing gonna hold me back. Nothing gonna hide. Got a smile on my face. Can't help but sing along. Dancing through the streets, let the rhythm take me on. And it ends with an instrumental. Oh, my goodness. Listen, I I don't know what you think when you hear this and when you see what what is happening. One of the things you might think is, oh, man, musicians are in trouble. They are going to be out of work because if I need a jingle for my podcast, I could just use this AI tool to generate something as opposed to hiring a musician to do it for me. That's what you might think. But something else you could think is, I would have never been able to afford to hire a musician to do a custom jingle for my podcast. And now I can get a custom jingle for my podcast. There are possibilities. There, there is so much possibilities right now. I'm able to do things right now by myself that I can't afford to get the right people to do for me or with me. But I'm still able to do it. And I'm able to do it at a higher level because I'm leveraging this technology that exists, that is evolving, that is growing, that is getting better every single day. And while, yes, there are things about it that concern me, while, yes, I do see reason for the moral panic, and I do think that we need to be proactive about how we navigate this change because the reality is this change is happening faster than any change I've ever seen. And if it was ever important for us to be proactive about how we choose to navigate technological shifts, there's an increased urgency today. And we can't just sit back and say, this is of the devil. We, I, we let, keep the kids away, protect the kids, protect your jobs, protect everything. This is just insanity. Yes, you can say that. But the reality is, 
if you say that, let me tell you some of the things that you're going to do as a result. Number one, if you're a parent, you're not going to be preparing your, your, your kids for the inevitable. Number two, you're going to be sending them to study for jobs that will no longer exist. And setting them up to live in a society where they can no longer compete. If you just stand by the side and ignore the shifts that are happening, there are others that are not going to stand aside and ignore it. And they're going to be able to be to, to produce way more and better than you will ever be able to produce on your own. And they're going to compete with you at a level that you just can't. Like, you're not even in the fight. You're not even in the competition because this thing is evil. That's not where I think you should be. A better alternative is for us to invest time in trying to understand the technological shifts that are inevitable. This is the society that we live in. In. We live in this society and we need to understand how to navigate it and how to navigate the changes that are happening. So we need to educate ourselves, number one. Number two, we need to be proactive in how we prepare for the shifts and how we navigate those shifts. And number three, which is the part that I'm doing right now, is we also need to share what we're learning with others so that we can help them to navigate the shifts. If you think AI is a threat to your job, study how AI can augment your job. We call it artificial intelligence. I've heard a number of people say this and I like it. Instead of calling it artificial intelligence, maybe we should call it augmented intelligence because it can come alongside us and help us to do what we do better. If we can find a way to leverage this technology to give us more time to be more human, I think that's a win. That's going to be my summary. If we can find a way to leverage this technology to make us more human, that's a win. Yeah. I think I need to wrap it up. This was a longer episode, but it's a, it's an important topic. It's something that I'm becoming passionate about. Not because I'm like, AI is everything. No, no, no. I have my concerns. And as you listen to me over the episodes, you're going to hear more of my concerns. But I just wanted to balance the concerns and the alarm and the moral panic with a different way of looking at artificial intelligence. Because I think that if there is more balance, we're going to be able to be more effective, be more productive, be more all the stuff, all the things. So that's what I'm that's what I'm encouraging. I'm encouraging us to be more human by leveraging the technology to do what the technology does best and freeing ourselves up to connect, to engage, to love. Ooh, you didn't think you would hear that in a podcast about AI, did you? Free us up to love. Ooh, I like that. All right, that's it for this episode. Uh, my name is Leslie Samuel from IamLeslieSamuel.com where we're changing the world one person at a time. Come and leave your comments on this episode. Uh, this was, this was fun. That's it. Until next time, take care and God bless.